Aloha. My name is Elaine Gallant, and I'm your host of Books, 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 a live streaming series through Think Tech Hawaii, where we'll be discussing the reading of books, writing of books, and everything in between and beyond. Today's discussion is with Rita Forsythe, my hope cohort in crime, literally, because she and I have authored crime novels. Rita will also be hosting this show on an alternating basis beginning January the 4th. So be sure to mark your calendars. Right now, however, we'll be interviewing one another about Amazon's newest reading experience, Bella. We're gonna delve into its culture as well as its benefits for readers and authors alike. Rita, my friend, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure. You've published two novels so far on Bella. So first, can you tell us a little bit about your novels? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, my first novel is Under the Monkey Pod Tree, and that is a fictional work based on the legends of the Hawaiian Mo'o and the uh, Laie Pond here in Kihei. So um, I was inspired to write this to um, bring attention to the cultural and environmental significance of the wetlands. Elaine, I don't know what your weather has been like over the past couple of days, but we've been getting rain and mud. And I tell yes, you what, if it wasn't for our healthy wetlands, things would be a lot worse for us here in Kihei. I agree with that. Even on the Lahaina side, the dry side, I agree. So, so anyway, uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You were going to tell okay. me about paper dolls, I think. Yeah, well, um, let me tell you a little speck about Monkey Pod. Uh, in that novel, a woman arrives on the island of Maui to claim an unexpected uh, inheritance, don't we wish, <laughs> and uh, she soon realizes there's a dark side to paradise. So on to the second novel, Paper Dolls. That's a psychological thriller about identical triplet women, and of course this is fiction, uh, and they live in a remote farmhouse in Colorado. Uh, Paper Dolls is a cringeworthy mix of crime and comedy. So um, both books, Elaine, are available on Vela, and uh, um, they will be, fingers crossed, uh, available on um, ebook and print next year, 2022. That is great, Rita. And I've read both your novels. Well, I'll say I read the first one into the monkey pod tree, but I'm working on the second one. Thanks. <laughs> Love that. Um, so, Elaine, you've been published. What's your experience uh, publishing The Fifth Sea and Where the Lilacs Bloom? Well, The Fifth Sea was a, an, a paperback novel and an ebook. So, and that was during Create Space time. Uh, and that's about a rookie CIA officer who's left for dead after his first assignment, only to be taken deep into the CIA to help solve an illicit diamond operation. So that experience was slightly different from my experience on Vela with Where Lilacs Bloom. Now that novel is where God asks a grieving young woman to be an instrument of peace, but her promise proves harder to uphold once the devil gets involved. But both novels were easy for me to post as an author, but Vela turned out to be even more so. I think it's more reader friendly as well. I really do. Um, so let's talk about Vela in particular. What's been your experience at Vela? Because you started it, you got me involved, <laughs> you were the groundbreaker. Tell me, tell readers what is Vela and what it means for them. Good questions. Um, so everything that I say today, you need to know that it could change tomorrow. Our our platforms are changing as we speak, uh, but it's. Uh, I think Vela is here to stay. Uh, so, um, I can tell you my story. I can tell you my experiences. Please uh, do. I, yeah. I completed uh, the monkey pod tree and um, about six months later, uh, I was kind of trying to figure out how to best bring this book to my readers. And I was hacking through the jungle of the publishing world. And that's no fun. <laughs> I'd rather just write, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so I heard about this Vela program on Amazon, 
And they were saying it would be to offer readers uh, stories told one short episode at a time. So that piqued my interest. Well, what, but, but what is Vela? I mean, can you give us a more uh, understanding of what it means for readers? Sure, sure. Uh, it is serialized fiction, and that's nothing new. Uh, Charles Dickens, um, Stephen King, Margaret Atwood uh, wrote in serialized versions. Um, and, you know, we watch TV, we watch Netflix, some of us, and uh, uh, we're used to short um, chapter-like episodes. So now with Amazon, uh, they have brought us that in book form. And it's just like watching a 20 minute episode on TV. Yeah, like LA Law or something, but uh, yeah. now in reader format. So um, for some re writers, they, um, they like to uh, write and then pop the episode on right away, immediately, like that very day. I'm, I don't do that. Uh, I, ha I haven't <laughs> been brave enough to do that quite yet because I <laughs> do a lot of editing uh, before I want it to be public. So I complete my manuscript all the way through before I put the episodes on. And then I feather on the episodes uh, a couple a day until the whole manuscript is on there. Yeah, I think you've got to be kind of brave to write on the fly like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm like you, Rita, where I have to write and rewrite and write and rewrite until I finally get it to where I'm really happy. So yeah. I'm like you where I wanted to put everything out. And um, I think you took your time in putting your episodes out. I think you put one episode out and then waited a week and then you put another episode out and then you waited a week. And then for the next one, you're doing it a little differently, I think. I know what I did is I put the whole thing out in episode. I hope put the whole novel of where Lilacs Bloom out. Uh, yeah, and I, I put one out like every day, every two days, uh, as quickly as I did my last final double check before I sent it out into the world. Yes. Would you agree that Vela is sort of like a shortened... And, uh, novella. Yeah, you know I, mean? I think that's probably where it got its name, don't you? I think so too. Um, when did Amazon start, Bella? It's a really new program. It started this July, you know, six months ago. And I was one of the early adopters. Um, I jumped in right before the launch. And since then, uh, and that was with Monkey Pot Tree. And then since then, I have finished uh, Paper Dolls and got that on there. So um, it's a brand new program. Fantastic. Can you tell us where you found it and how you found it? I mean, I had never heard about it. You brought it to me, and I've been writing for a little while. Well, um, I started seeing it on Facebook, and I also have some other author friends who had heard about it, and they hadn't done it yet they hadn't you know put any work on there yet but they had heard about it so I thought hmm might be interesting so I did some research and um your uh, listeners might be interested to know <clears throat> to know where they can find it uh go to amazon.com on your browser apple users uh, can find it on their kindle app android users unfortunately not yet soon fingers crossed uh, and it's only available at this time in the United States, but soon we'll be coming to Canada, our dearest neighbor and friend, and um, other countries in Europe. And so we're really excited for launching worldwide. How do readers read Vela? How, how does that process work? Let's say I want to read, I mean, I, I know how it works because I've read your, your novels, but um, let's say someone new is coming in and they want to read some episodes. How do they go about that? So um, if you are um, an, an Apple user, then you can read it on your browser or on your Kindle app. If you are an Android user, you can find it on your browser. That's it right now. Huh? But and uh, <laughs> How do they pay for it? I mean, you know, when you buy a novel, you pay a price. And when you buy an ebook, you pay a price. So how do you pay for um, Bella? How do you do that? Yeah, it's a really 
really different. That's a really good question, Elaine. Um, each episode amazingly just costs pennies. And by the time you are finished with the entire novel, uh, it's really a lot cheaper than if you bought the paperback book full price or the ebook. And so you purchase tokens on Amazon.com. And these tokens give you access to installments of between 600 and 5,000 words. And you can pick any book in any of the, there's about 10,000 or more books on already in the past six months. Uh, and you can use these tokens to read multiple books at a time. You can switch back and forth. Um, the cool thing is the first three episodes are always free on every novel. And uh, at least at this point they are. And um, the nice thing about that, I think, is because you can um, check that book out and see if you really like it for free yeah. before you pay for tokens to start reading. And right. Then, so your, your investment is very, is zero, could be zero if you're not enjoying a book, which sometimes <laughs> happens, right? It does. It uh, does. But if you're enjoying it, then you get the first three chapters for free, and then, then you start paying the tokens, yes. right? And they yeah. can even stop that at any time if they get into chapter 10 and want to move to another book, right? Yeah. Yes. And then they or, can go back to that book and buy more episodes if they want to. Yeah, so it's very really possible. Quite so what are some of the other pros to Vela? And also, what are some of the cons? Uh, let's see. So I think for pros, you know, we've talked about the low cost and the ease of access. But also, uh, readers can give thumbs up and they can fave, you know, their favorite stories. Uh, and kind of one cool thing for me as an author is I can write in author's notes some of my thinking. So, for instance, when I was doing the monkey pottery, I did research on ha Hawaiian cultural uh, points of interest on the pond, on the mo'os, and I would um, put my references down there, even though it was a fiction book. I would put my references in the author's notes. Authors can also, you know, write about what they're thinking at the time when they wrote it and why they wrote the, the words they did. So it's another form of interaction between the reader and the writer. So that's some of the pros. So cons. Um, well, one thing I was thinking, and you probably have some ideas too, Elaine, but I was thinking that uh, a lot of us are on the computer all day and working digitally and with eye fatigue, sometimes people just want to relax at night with a paperback book in their hand, you know, and so um, that would be one of the cons for uh, more digital access. What do you think? Is there, is there anything else to add to that, <laughs> Elaine? Well, I can think of a few cons. One, it's hard for the writer to give an autograph on an ebook or a Bella book. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> also, you, can't really wrap it up. you can't really wrap it up for Christmas either, can you? <laughs> oh, you can't, can't gift wrap it. Um, um, and and ebooks and uh, Vela books have no heft, uh, aside from the device you're reading them from, where a book has heft, and that's that that has some warmth to it, right? Flipping a page and you know, but everything's become so digitally. But I can think of a thousand pros as well. Like for instance, with the digital books, you can highlight, you can take notes, you can look up definitions right away, just touch it. You can, and then after, after you've marked it all up and you've, and you've done all your research, you can actually clean it up and put it back into its pristine state. You can't do a hardback or, or a paperback, right? You've, you've marked it up. Um, ebooks don't take up any shelf space, neither do, neither do the Vela books. You, they don't need to be dusted. And here's the good thing. When you travel, you can take your entire library with you, right? So there are some real benefits to digital and to Vela books that paperbacks and hardbacks don't offer. That's true. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have a little cold going on. It's okay. I have, I have a question for you, though. Sure. Um, you've published both in traditional and Vela format. Can you discuss the evolution of the original hardback novels into oh. episodic serials? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because, you know, things started with the hardback going to paperback. And hardbacks are 
tomes almost. You know, people built libraries around them and uh, stored them forever, and 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 they are collectible items. And, and same same with with paperback. But then the pocketbook came around, and I don't know if people know about the pocketbook. The pocketbook was small enough to fit in your pocket or in your pocket book in your purse, and you could just pull it out and read a few chapters or whatever. Um, after that came novellas and now episodic serials. Um, I would do want to mention that the first paperback came out around 1935 by Penguin Books and then again in 1938 by Pocket Books uh, with Pearl Bucks, The Good Earth. Um, and then the first digital, um, looking at my notes here, 1997 with the Rocket Book and these two men, Eberhardt and Tarpening, were lifelong voracious readers, and they saw a future where everyone would be reading um, digital books. And, and that's from Google. I got that source from Google. So it's quite interesting, the evolution of things. And now, you know, it's almost like we've gone from these giant tomes down to episodes that are even smaller than novellas and that's how we're reading now that um, we can read instantly 20 seconds or 20 minutes or whatever we have and not lose pace with what's happening in a novel and that's well, where know, that's where Bella's pretty incredible yeah and you know I know my attention span is getting shorter and shorter <laughs> uh, it's quite good for that Oh, I just thought of another pro of um, books versus uh, ebooks and uh, Vela, and that is books pay bigger royalties. They pay, because they're more expensive, right? So for writers, we we earn a little bit more, but you don't have that interaction uh, with the reader like you do with Vela, where they can give you a high five or a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then as you're writing you know, you can actually change the course of the novel based on reactions that you're getting from readers at the time, right? On a, on, a, on a book or on a paperback, you have to wait for the reviews to come out and then it's kind of late, right? <laughs> <laughs> the job is done. No one wants to rewrite that thing. <laughs> oh, no. Do you have any other pros and cons of print versus digital for the writer? Yes. Well, uh, the it's it's the higher royalties number one, and but both get your get both get your book out into the world. Um, both offer the highlighting, the note taking, and a quick flip back and forth to mark pages and and sharing between family members. Um, except with digital, all happens with the touch of a button, you know. So, and uh, we've already talked about um, the other benefits. So, uh, let's see. So is there any benefits to the author to publish on Bella that you haven't talked about yet? Well, there are. Uh, you know, we have identifiers for our books. Let's say you're looking for a mystery or a thriller or suspense or something. Those are identifiers. And with Vela, you can change them almost daily. Let's say the trend is thrillers and your book has all of the elements of a thriller and a mystery and a suspense. So your first one is thriller and you can change that daily, you know, depending on what's going on. Uh, and, and I already said, you can correct your novel as you go along. If you, if you're putting it on in episodes and, and, and that's how you're posting it to the system. Um, and then in the interaction with the reader, I mean, that's priceless to be able to put notes in as an author to the reader that that says, you know, this building exists in France and I visited it in 1997 and, you know, or I went into this tomb and this and this happened. You know, that's priceless with, for uh, readers because they get that little bit of insight and authenticity to the book that authors put that authors give. So that's wonderful. For the beginning writer, Vela is extremely author friendly, very, very author friendly. It's, it's not scary at all. Uh, and it's not labor intensive as it is for a traditional publishing. Uh, it, it is so simple. We can all do it. We, can, we really can all do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> what 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 can you tell me about Rita? What what's your experience been in the benefits for you as a writer 
with Vela. I know that they right now are giving out bonuses to authors because it's a new program. And I know that will disappear eventually. So right now we're all earning a little bit more, maybe a little closer to a, a novel that ha that's in print. So what else have you seen that's that's been wonderful for the author or even the beginning author? Because, you know, you started with Under the Monkey Pod Tree. So in that sense, how did you navigate? Uh, what fears did um, Bella put aside for you as an author to put your book on Bella versus going right to Kindle or to print? Well, I first tried traditional publishers, and uh, you have to go through an agent and query multiple agents and wait multiple months <laughs> <laughs> for a response or not. And uh, that's discouraging for the the new author. It uh, is. The, the rumor, is, the, the, the saying is, wallpaper your wall with the rejection letters and have mm -hmm. a good laugh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was really frightened about that because I'd never done it before. And I also was worried about the permanence of like, what if I made a mistake? And what if I said something that wasn't quite right or in, you know, something incorrect. And uh, so I had a lot of fears, but with Bella, uh, it's just, you push a button bleep, and it's live. It's, it's on there. And um, the formatting is done for you. It's just so incredibly simple that it just, it was really fun and it's exciting to watch your readership grow. And uh, you have a little dashboard where you can see who, you know, how many people are reading each episode. And it's just very motivating to keep going, keep going. You know, we need writers out there to um, not be afraid to publish. There's so many people I have talked to that say, oh, I've always wanted to write a book or I have an idea for a book. I think this is going to open up the floodgates of some amazing talent out there. What do you think, Elaine? I agree with that. I would like to know, though, Rita, what are some of the reader comments that you've been getting? I think you've had some interactions. You know, it's they can't really comment on the device itself, but they can, you know, if you provide your email or Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing, you can get a lot of comments from people. People are saying, where's the next book? You know, I've stayed up all night reading the book. Where's the second book of the monkey pod tree? <laughs> <laughs> it's just great to hear, to hear how people, this one person said that she related so much to one of my characters. And she said, that's just the way my daughter-in-law was acting. <laughs> you know? so it, it, it just brings a lot of joy to a, to a new author. Yeah, I had one reader say about um, where lilacs bloom. She says, I've always worried about this happening. <laughs> you know, God coming to her and asking her to do something and then the devil getting involved and messing it all up for her. Oh. So, you know, it was quite fun to, it, it's fun to interact with readers. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's another dimension. It's kind of that... Uh, that third dimension, you know, you, you read, you write, but then to interact between the reader and writer, it's, it's something that I've never experienced before. It's really a kick. I agree. Outside of sitting at an author's table, right, where you actually have the reader in front of you, which we've all done as well, as well. Will you continue to write for Vela, or will you oh, eventually exactly. take your books off and put them into print? Well, if I can keep them on both platforms, I'm going to do that. If I can't, if it just goes to print, I'll just move them into print after a while. But uh, once I start on my third novel, I plan on doing the same process. I think it's a great way to get started and to kind of try out your materials also. Yes. And do you have a title for your third novel? Is it a sequel to either Under the Monkey Pod Tree or Paper Dolls? It's a sequel to Under the Monkey Pod Tree, and I'm thinking it'll be Under the Eucalyptus Tree. So we'll see. <laughs> oh, and then you need to do one Under the um, Lay Tree. Maybe. The, a little Plumeria Tree. <laughs> or maybe the Coffee Bush. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's funny as authors, we always have other books going on, right? I have two myself, and one is called Birds in the Puka, and the other one is called uh, Tenterhooks that I'm working on. So that's quite... Uh, quite 
quite fun to be thinking ahead on all these things and planning what direction we're going to take our novels, right? Yes. What are you reading right now, Rita? Well, I'm reading uh, your book, Where Lilacs Bloom on Vela. Uh -huh. And on my Kindle, I'm reading a fellow Hawaiian author, Toby Neal. I'm sure a lot of yes. our uh, viewers know Toby Neal. I'm yes, I'll be interviewing her on January the 18th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm reading her Blood Orchids book. How about Happy. you? What's on, what's on your bedside table? Well, of course, I read your monkey, pod tr your monkey pod tree book, and I'm going through Paper Dolls now. But I'm also reading um, Amor Tolls, The Lincoln Highway, and then I also have um, The Liar's Dictionary by Ellie Williams. And then I'll be interviewing Alan Brennert in February. So I'm reading Daughters of Molokai. Cool. So th that's all, all good reading right now. Rita, thank you for joining me today. It's it's in our discussion of books, 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 and Amazon's newest reader experience in Bella. It's been my pleasure. I hope it's been your pleasure. We give thanks to Think Tech Hawaii because in general, for the technicians, the staff, the production crew, and in particular, the executive producer, Jay Fidel. We also graciously thank our viewers and all of you who've donated funds or provided financial grants in keeping Think Tech Hawaii streaming for over 20 years with the promise of going forward. So thank you very much for that. We simply can't do it without you. In closing, Rita and I wish you excellent reading. Watch Rita's show January the 4th on your books, 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 and mine on January 18th with Toby Neal. Thank you. Mahalo and Mahalo. good night.